Hey there, I'm Brent and this crazy machine right in front of me is a project I've been working on for almost a year at this point. I've been designing this massive 3D printer which I'm calling the Werder XL1 Alpha 1. It's a RepRap printer, meaning it's self-replicating. So all of the white parts that you see on this uh, and some of the other plastic parts uh, are 3D printed. Uh, so a 3D printer prints parts for another printer and eventually this printer will be able to print one of itself, uh, which is pretty cool. This thing is pretty interesting for a couple of reasons. First of all, the XY gantry up top here will actually be able to detach from this 3D printing Z-axis. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, really. I mean, everything on this printer is designed to be very, very modular. So it's not just the XY gantry. The tool head, the electronics, even the frame can be swapped out to suit any different machining purpose that you might have. At least that's the goal for this printer in the future. So without further ado, let's check out what I have done so far. So one of the most prominent features of this printer is the tool head up front. So for this monstrosity right up at the top here, I have a Titan Arrow hot end uh, and extruder setups attached to this. Uh, back slider unit. But of course I promised that this printer was designed to be highly modular and I wasn't lying. This tool head up here is modular. In fact, it's so modular that I'm going to nickname it the Mod Tool. Uh, it's a little bit of a cheesy name, so we'll see how that goes in the future, but for now, Mod Tool is the name. One thing I wanted to be sure of when I was designing the mod tool here was to make swapping out these mod tools ridiculously easy. So in the Alpha 1 build, mod tools connect up to the X carriage with four M3 by 40 millimeter machine screws and a D sub connector up at the top. The faceplate for the X carriage is 50 millimeters by 80 millimeters, though I suspect that'll change to accommodate larger tools such as a CNC router. But yeah, the entire thing just pops off the machine and that allows you to swap it out with pretty much any other tool that you'd like. So realistically for 3D printing, you might want to swap that out with, uh, you know, a different type of extruder like a E3D Volcano. That would be a little bit uh, higher throughput. Or maybe a high detail hot end like a Mosquito hot end. You might even do a pellet extruder, something crazy like that. And really the, the possibilities are endless there. So one of the interesting things about this extruder up top here is that it has a D-Sub 15 terminal breakout board. So basically what that means is uh, it connects up to this connector on the back. It's called a D-Sub 15 connector. So this plugs in right into that board and screws in. Uh, and then all of these cables here, it goes from a breakout board on this side to another breakout board on the other side. And on this side we'll have our outputs or I guess inputs depending, uh, all go out to their boards uh, or wherever they have to go. When I was designing this Titan Arrow mod tool, I wanted to make sure that every single wire was self-contained in this part, so there's not going to be any loose wires when this thing is removed from the gantry. And I think that worked out pretty well, and I'm hoping that the future mod tools that I put together also follow this trend of being nicely wire managed and pretty clean looking at the end. All right, so this top section is called the XY gantry. This thing just moves the tool head around in the XY Cartesian plane. It's interesting because this entire section will pop off of the machine. That allows this same motion system for the top to be used for a variety of different things. So for example, this tool head could be switched out to a CNC router, and this entire XY gantry could instead be screwed directly onto a workpiece. This thing uses a 450 millimeter linear rail with some lead screws driven by stepper motors. So in X it has one motor, one limit switch to home that axis, and then in Y it has two stepper motors, and one limit switch to home it in that axis. So the electronics are in place, but the wiring isn't done yet. So what I have planned for that is a D-sub. D-sub 15 connector is going in the corner here, uh, and then 
of course that's going to be able to unplug and allow you to plug this into even a different board, a different power supply. So the last section I'd like to discuss is the electronics bay. So this is a pretty simple area comprised of two 2020 extrusions spaced roughly 150 millimeters apart. You can see right now that my electronics board, the Einsi Rambo 1.1B, is not installed. I'm actually working on this separately. This uh, piece right here is designed to house this and allow it to be easily removed from the frame for maintenance. So you'll notice that this board uses an XT60 connector with a couple of crimps on it to allow it to be disconnected from power when I need to take it off the frame. You'll also notice that on the back of this part I have some D-sub connectors that are interfacing with the other half of the tool head and XY gantry. So that allows this entire thing to be removed quickly and easily from the entire printer. Beyond that, I'm currently working on an LCD mount for the front of the printer, which will allow me to print without it being uh, tethered to a computer all the time, which is a huge plus. I'm also working on getting a Raspberry Pi in here, or even switching out this board with a Duet Wi-Fi, which will allow me to do wireless printing, which will totally make this a lot easier for me to work with. Well, that's about it for this first design log on the Order XL1 Alpha 1 build. I'll be back pretty soon with the Alpha 2 revision, which will hopefully include a Z-axis, so this is a 3D printer and not a 2D printer, uh, as well as a couple other changes to the XY gantry, mod tool, and the electronics. But all of those proposed changes are listed in far more detail on my website. Speaking of, this entire project is listed in far more detail on my website. I wrote a blog post about this whole thing, including details that I couldn't exactly fit into this video. So if you want more on this project, highly recommend that you go check that out. The link will be down below. Otherwise, that's about it from me. Hopefully you enjoyed. I've had a blast putting this thing together. Um, hopefully I see you next time. Uh, so take care, see ya.